In 2013, Hubble pointed a bit to the right of our galactic core at a cloud of dust and gas which surrounds a variable star called RS Puppis. Or is it Poopis? Puppis? Poopis? Anyway, every 41 days, this star goes from bright to dark and back again. Twice a week, over the course of five weeks, Hubble snapped Puppis. And when they stuck the pics together into some kind of digital flipbook, something rather surprising came out. Bright and dark ripples traveling out from the star through the nebula at the speed of light. Now I want to film one of these pulsating nebula clouds too. But the thing is, this particular variable nebula is blooming thousands of light years away. So I'm hoping that mum of two, Emma, will help me find one a bit closer because she is a world renowned astrophysicist. I think this is really cool. It's cool, isn't it? It is cool because I haven't seen it before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's lots of variable stars. Also, there is so much dust and gas, right? It should be happening all over the place, shouldn't it? You know, I'm surprised it hasn't been filmed before. I'm yeah, no, I'm surprised too. Although variable nebula are probably quite common, Emma only finds 164 papers written about them ever. So how many papers would there be on like black holes or something 30, like that? 30,000. Right. So 160 is pretty small. So small. I've never seen such a small number actually. Despite not having much to work with, Emma searches for a variable nebula that an amateur like me could image and discovers Edwin Hubble himself bagged one a hundred years ago. It must have been fairly easy to observe because they were managing to do it in 1915. That's really exciting. Because us amateurs, we are way better than that. <laughs> you are over it. <laughs> if Edwin could image Hubble's variable nebula, then amateurs like me can too. And in fact, five years ago, Tom Palakis took a time lapse of this nebula from his backyard in Phoenix, Arizona. What he captured was both astonishing and puzzling. The first one kind of showed light ripples whereas this you can see dark dark ripples <laughs> yeah and they're not kind of spreading out yeah these like, are they're not in a pond like... ripple shape it's going all over the place these are like waving kind of like a dancey thing which is really fun what on earth do you think is going on here um being as almost nothing is written about these kind of nebula um, emma has to do what all genie i do in these situations um, and wing it I think this star's actually on the order of hundreds of thousands of years old, so really, really a baby baby. Gosh, that's yeah. very young, isn't it? And babies cry, and babies eject. <laughs> 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 and so it's the same with this star, I think. So, so you're so, saying we've got like a projectile vomiting baby star? Pretty much, I think that's my best guess. So imagine the scene. You've got a baby star encased in a womb of dust and gas, and boom! It does a mega ejection, and the ejection blasts a cone-shaped channel through the dust and gas. And that explains the cone shape, but the shadows are something else. As it does this, it will send streams of dust. The dust streams block out some of the star's light. And that's the, that's the shadows that you see. It seems like we've got this baby star, which is absolutely mad, doing all this crazy stuff with dark dust streams going on, and we'd never be able to see it, except that it's projecting what's happening near it onto the, like a projection screen on the wall of this cone-shaped nebula. It's like shadow puppets. It's basically making a duck. But you know, everything I'm saying, it's an educated guess. <laughs> um, because, because these things haven't been well studied. It seems to me really worthwhile thing for us geeks to start trying to do. Definitely. This is an area of, of astrophysics which is wide open to, to the amateur community. That, my fellow geeks, is a call to arms if ever I heard one. We better get shifty on though, because these variable nebula can disappear at any moment. Take the Gailubudigayan variable nebula, for instance. That disappeared last year. 
bad news, I'm afraid. With lockdown, loads of people went out and bought telescopes. And those of us in the game know that when that happens, you get this. Storm Christoph is currently sweeping the country. Half of the nation is under snow. The rest is going to be under water and no one but no one is going to be able to use their telescopes. So what do we do when we're having horrendous cloud upon cloud upon cloud like we are at the moment? Well, you cheat and use a remote controlled telescope in Chile. An hour on this baby costs on average about 50 quid. But Alex from Telescope Live says I can use it for free. Only problem is, he thinks I need it for just one night. There seems to be this huge hole in professional astronomy, and that hole is variable nebula. There's just the, the, the small matter of, in order to get it, you can't just take one shot which is kind of what we had been talking about. Yeah, <laughs> right. You have to take like a shot every other day or something for like a month or more. Oh, uh, right. Okay. It's <laughs> yeah, a little bit more than one night. <laughs> so it's gone from one night to like 20 nights sort of thing. Okay. Well, I mean, it sounds like a cool project. Yeah, let's give it a go. We'll give it a go. All right. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Really appreciate you being a sport on this. We love cool projects, so... I can't guarantee it'll work. I've got to be honest. Telescope Live are letting me use this awesome scope, a 24-inch CDK, top-end amateur scope, for half an hour, every clear night, for about a month. This is the first sub. And this is the second. And here's the third. And do you see what's happening? This variable nebula doesn't seem to be varying at all. So I got in touch with John Lightfoot, who's got his own Hubble Variable Nebula Facebook page. I, I, so I am slightly worried. Your biggest problem at the moment is that the, the, uh, the bloody nebula is not doing very much. Right. Um, so, which is sort of unusual. So I'm still sort of on tenterhooks that it could burst into life at any day. Well, she didn't burst into life. At least, not until the last three subs. There, look, the beginnings of a dark shadow. So I got some colour data too, did some fancy processing, and yeah, time to show Alex from Telescope Live what all the free time he'd given me on that scope in Chile had produced. Which one, which one do you want me to look at? The black and white one? Or the... Whichever one you like best. I, I... Yeah, let's have a look at the colour one. So this is Hubble's variable nebula when it's inactive. Can you see what I'm seeing, folks? No dark shadows, but ripples traveling through the nebula at the speed of light. Amazing. So what do you think? Oh, I mean, that's really cool. It's good, isn't it? It's really, really cool, yeah. Despite not getting the spectacular dark shadows that Tom Palakis caught and Hubble saw 100 years ago, what we got is scientifically just as interesting because it proves that this young baby star is pulsating, just like the star that the Hubble telescope filmed at the beginning of this video. And just those last few frames, right, there's the beginning of a shadow moving yeah, across is. near the core. Yeah, that's super cool, yeah. It's a bittersweet result for me because that dark cloud was about to spread across the entire nebula and it would have been a fantastic display, but of course no human witnessed it. No one was shooting it. So we're gonna do something about it. I propose that we gather amateurs from all around the world and try and shoot Hubble's variable nebula twice a week for like the next five months or longer or forever. To pull this off, I'm banking on the fact that at any one time, at least one of our amateurs has clear skies. It probably won't be the UK, but in Germany, America, somewhere the skies will be clear and we can do it. All right, time to recruit some nerds. So if you've got like an eight inch new or something a bit better than that, then please join me and a growing group of talented astrophotographers in an online community called The Big Amateur Telescope, AKA The Bat. So far, The Bat has been pooling data, including lucky imaging data, to produce amazing shots worthy of multi-million dollar scopes. The Bat is actually just one small part of the largest astrophotography Discord server in the universe. 
It's the Astro Biscuit Discord server. It's all completely free, although if you're one of the top astro photographers or you support me on Patreon, then you get access to some hidden channels. And if you don't have a scope, why not use one of Telescope Live scopes remotely? It won't cost you as much as you think because you only need half an hour to get all the data that you need. And that's because their scopes are so blooming big. If you use the code ASTROBISCUIT, you'll get a discount and you can win some free time on one of their scopes by entering a competition to process my Hubble's variable nebula data. Link below. Massive thanks to Richtenstein for the incredible music. You can download his album, link below. Massive thanks to Dr. Emma Chapman. You can buy her book, First Light, about the first stars in the universe, link below. Uh, I am actually experiencing a bit of a cash flow situation right now. So I'm gonna have to uh, pause making videos and go back to work for a bit. My Patreons, I don't feel should uh, give me donations while I'm working for someone else. So I'm gonna pause my Patreon for a bit. You can still join up, just means the money won't go out of your account. And I'm gonna put a link in for a camera that I'm trying to raise money to buy so that I could do lucky imaging for the bat. So if you're feeling generous, then please uh, throw some money at me. It'd be very much appreciated. Uh, otherwise I will be around on Discord and I will be back soon. So see you on Discord or see you in a few months. All right, cheers, bye. Here are some of our favorite vids. And don't forget to subscribe and maybe ring the bell so that when the Biscuit Man makes his glorious return, you'll be the first to know. Laters all, take care.